Hello everyone, this is Kuroda giving you an introductory version of StarCraft 2. I'm going to do an intro StarCraft 2 cast. I know a lot of you guys out there have been asking for this and the the card or the, the clouds parted and someone gave me a really good reason to do it. So I am going to be doing a more of an intro version of a StarCraft 2 cast. Now in general, all you're trying to do in StarCraft 2 is to destroy each other's buildings. Simple as that, straightforward as that, whoever loses all of their buildings first, loses the game. Now, like in any good game, there are many ways to approach and in order to get to that one particular objective. Every player or every team starts off with one main building and a certain number of workers. What you're seeing these workers do is that they are currently just collecting a lot of minerals and resources in order to be able to build more buildings and build more units. The starting units that you start off with are not very effective at destroying other buildings, but they, are, they do allow you, and they are the only real units that allow you to harvest and gain more resources. So even though they are one of the weakest units in the game, it is a very good indicator to know who is in the lead based upon the count of the number of harvesters that they have. Now, taking a look at the races in general and the players on the bottom left hand side of the map we have a blue terran player meanwhile on the top right hand side of the map we have a red zerg zerg versus terran i won't go into the third race and a little bit of background as each of these races in starcraft 2 are unique the terran player or the terran race in general is the most human like out of all of the races it, it is an it is a race that has workers inside vehicles or inside um, you know technology in order to fight very very well you can actually see the little worker right there smoking a cigarette and that's his little portrait as they are trying to work the zerg race that you see here are a much more highly evolved or a, a evolved way of just pure combat they they take over other races and and grab their dna and allow them to just create very very vicious killing killing animals is the best way to describe it. Now, what you're seeing down over here is that the Zerg player is expanding in order to take additional resources. Now, as I mentioned earlier in the game, resources help you build a larger army, but your starting location does have limited resources and those resources will eventually mine out. So it is always a good idea to try to take additional resources. The problem with this though, is that anytime you try to control more area or more land, you are starting to spread yourself a little bit thin. So where there is great risk, there is great reward as you do get additional minerals and you are able to mine much more quickly and perhaps build up a larger army. But if your opponent is able to strike at the right time, they could perhaps get you to destroy or cancel this building before it is completed and then you would end up being behind. Now, I've talked about one of the two types of resources in the game. There is minerals, which everything does cost minerals. And then there is also gas. Gas is essentially a second resource in the game that allows you to open up higher tech and higher tier units. I'll talk about that later on as this game does get underway. Now, another important aspect of the game is that you have limited sight and information into what is currently going on in the game if you take a look right now i'm giving you the vision of only the blue player the blue blue player has no idea what's going on inside his opponent's base so he will constantly have to try to scout send units or perhaps just get information somehow to figure out what the strategy and what the what the overall tactics of his opponent is going to be you can see there's currently five marines trying to attack against all of these zerglings those zerglings are those little small rabid like dog creatures that are very effective in large numbers as they deal um, as they do attack relatively quickly the problem is that they are not ranged units so these marines with their guns can deal damage and now trying to pull back here but this is going to be a very very bad attack here as all the marines look like they will get cleaned up without taking down any of the harvesters 
if you take a look at the harvester count it looks like there's 27 drones or 29 drones versus 23 so that would give the red zerg player a current advantage since he actually has a higher income he is currently bringing in about 1100 resources a minute meanwhile the terran player is bringing in about 800 but he is harvesting gas which will help him get higher and higher tier units. You can also see that the blue Terran player is trying to expand on his own. He is getting another orbital command here. And one of the benefits of Terran players is that they can actually move their buildings. These buildings can lift off and land and get into the proper position. So you see that the Terran player opted to build his building in, the, in this location here on the high ground. And then when it was safe, he will then lift it off and then land it at the natural expansion. The Zerg player also wants to get up more expansions here. So Nurcio looking to expand here into this third base. And this is something that Zerg players generally really like to do. They want to expand. They, they know that they can train up workers almost, much more quickly and faster than any of the other two races. And that is one of the strengths of the Zerg. But then again, if a Zerg player is too aggressive in their expanding, they tend to fall apart relatively quickly. Now what we're seeing next is a new type of unit coming in from the Terran player. These, car these cars are called Hellions. Essentially they are cars with flamethrowers on the top of them. They do a lot of damage to light units. Light units are generally fast moving units. And because they are fast moving units, they don't have a lot of armor. And whenever you, you know, throw a flamethrower at something that doesn't have a lot of armor, it deals more damage. So we are going to see light these cars here perhaps try to do a little bit of harassment and get more damage in. Currently, we're also seeing Zerglings just running around the map. And what they're trying to do is they're trying to get inside the base. They're trying to see if an expansion has been set up. He's, Nurcio still has no idea that there's an expansion here, but he has a he has a fair he can probably perhaps assume that there is something there. And that's why he decided to take his expansion as well. Now, all units or most units in StarCraft II cost a supply. What, what it is is how, is how many units you can have in the field at the same time. Currently, you, you see 76 supply for the blue Terran player. Meanwhile, 92 supply for Nurtio. As we now see So Hyung coming in with these blue flame Hellions, upgraded Hellions, dealing more damage to the worker line. And this is just running amok inside the base, causing a lot of problems. But the Hellions got stuck on the ramp by the Queen. A very good choke point. The cars were unable to do a quick drive-by at all. Nurcio did end up losing a fair amount of units, but um, so did So Hyung. So Hyung did not deal as much damage as he really needed to. As you now see the supply count at 60 versus 94. So 60 versus 94, Nurcio has a lot more units on the field. Also 60, 60 workers or 59 workers compared to 43. And because Nurcio is running off of more mineral patches, he should have a stronger economy. Now, one thing to note, only one worker can mine from a mineral patch at a time. So if you have a if you have 100, 100 workers and they're only mining from eight, uh, eight mineral patches that is not a good thing so that's one of the reasons why you are forced to try to expand and take control of more locations now we see nurcio has transitioned into roaches roaches are um, a very very tough armored unit that spits acid so they do have a bit of range it is less than a marine but one of the things about roaches is that they cannot actually spit acid into the air there are air and ground units. Marines can fire their rifles into the air to deal damage. But these roaches here, as, as they're running around, they cannot spit into the air. As we now see Hellions once again looking to deal a little bit more damage over here. They're going to get some drones just lining them up, torching them all to death. This is another good play. But if Seo Hyung needs to get a lot more damage, there are two more drones again. And more and more drones are getting killed. So great play by Nurcio. Oh, sorry, by Seo Hyung as Nurcio was able to spit acid at those hellions and the and it looks like all of these hellions will end up getting destroyed as nurcio now looking to take another hatchery here so hyung is now currently supply blocked this is a term where no more units can be trained until additional supply depots are 
are created. Zerg, if they are supply blocked, as you saw Nurtio was for a moment, they need to end up training more overlords. Meanwhile, Terran players need to build more supply depots. Supply depots look like that. It's that it's just a building that pretty much does absolutely nothing except for provide supply. You see that it is now 89 versus 132. Nurtio still in a strong advantage as these roaches are now making their way out. Just a thing to note, different units do cost a different supply. These roaches cost two supply each. Meanwhile, these little workers only cost one supply. So that is a way of balancing out the game as the roaches now once again push in Marines and Marauders, however, making their way over and they look like they are going to be dealing some damage. There is no upgrades on those Marauders and to slow down those units. The marauders are those big beefier units that you see alongside those Marines. Those Marauders deal a lot of damage to armored units. Unfortunately, though, because their attack is a Punisher grenade, they cannot attack the air. So even though they are um, better uh, better than Marines in some aspects, they are not as good against some other units as well since they cannot attack the air. We are also seeing a new two new units come in. We see the Medivacs and Siege Tanks. Medivacs are basically a trans a flying transport ship. And oh, look, there is a Burrowed Infester. So much is going on in this game. A Burrowed Infester just walking around. This is a spell casting unit who is now dropping um, in Infested Terrans and now doing a very strong attack all at the same time. The Siege Tanks, however, were able to clean up and make sure that attack did not come in. There is still one Infester off over here. You can see that there are two Medivacs. The Medivacs try to heal up these Marines and these Marauders, but they it does take energy in order to heal up those units. Zerglings now coming in with Roaches and Infestors. Those Infestors are those roly-poly type units. If you take a look at them, they are spellcasting units. They have energy. And what these spellcasters do, the more energy they have, the, the more effective they become as, oh, you another see another infested Terran has been launched, taking down two siege tanks as a siege tanks in order to try to take down or take out that little egg there, ended up taking out their own buddies. Siege tanks, a very nice unit. And while they're in siege mode, they are un they cannot move, but they have a very, very far effective range. Zergling is now trying to push on the front or on this door over here, but a nice wall of supply depot is preventing the units from actually getting or being able to funnel inside. And this was a critical, critical moment as Xiao Hyung was able to trap a lot of those Zerglings infestors there and make sure they were not able to run amok. Meanwhile, though, Nurtio behind this was able to get up a lot of units. You can see that there are Zerglings. Um, oh, the overlords off over here, but we now see a transition into corruptors. These corruptors are now turning and evolving themselves in cocoons into an even more deadly, dangerous unit called a broodlord. Those broodlords are a very long range unit that can only attack ground, but they attack by throwing uh, additional Zerg units, and those Zerg units e deal even more damage. You can now see the roaches are trying to test the waters here. The marines and the marauders able to push those units back. But Nurcio just so aggressive, expanding all across the map. You can see some infested Terrans are going to perhaps finish off this SCV. As now we see the Zerglings and the infestors now moving around. Ten broodlords look to come in. And how much damage can they do? Those siege tanks cannot attack back against those broodlords. So these broodlords is a perfect counter here. Only the marines can really get underneath. And the Marines are trying their best to focus fire down these Broodlords. The Broodlords are expensive units, but it looks as though enough Broodlings launched by those Broodlords to take down and and perhaps prevent this position from being um, established. So Hyung in trouble now. Zerglings are now making their way inside this expansion here. The third base as Seo Hyung is forced to lift off his building. He saves his building since all of these units can't attack air. But he is forced to retreat it and he's unable to mine any additional resources. Nurtio just pretty much moving with this massive army here, able to take down a lot of siege tanks. And now we're seeing Seo Hyung doing a tactical retreat, making sure that he is not overexposing himself and allowing reinforcements to get there much more quickly. Seo Hyung needs to train up Vikings, a unit that is effective against Broodlords as they can at as it's an air unit that attacks other air units and since the Broodlords are only effective against the ground the Broodlords can't fight back but this is becoming too much as Seo Hyung still has trained has yet to train any Vikings at this point you can now see Zerglings continuing to just run around the map here Metavax were looking to try to do drops in multiple locations but so far ineffective 
as the Blue Lords are pretty much going to all die here, but they have dealt much more damage than their cost. So a very good trade by Nurtio as Nurtio is now up to 178 supply compared to 78. So Nurtio with more than double the army and there's the good game and there's the forfeit. The good game well played coming from Seo Hyung as um, Seo Hyung forfeits the game knowing at this point there's not much more that he could do in order to get back into the game. Nurtio was simply too dominant holding on to so many bases at the same time. If you take a look at the stats at the end of the game, you can see that there are 66 drones compared to 34 SCVs. If you also look at some of the other um, some of the other um, tabs here, you can see that Nurtio really won this game with his economy. Even though both players had spent a similar amount of resources on their army, it was the fact that um, it was the fact that Nurcio had such a larger economy that he was able to constantly replenish his forces, and he also had a larger army constantly throughout the game. And then, anytime you have a larger army engaging against a smaller army, even though like your losses really really fall off uh, much more quickly because at the end you will have a lot more units than your opponent, and then you can re-add to that army there. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. I hope you guys enjoyed this a little bit more simplified version of StarCraft II casting. Let me know if you guys like it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. And I hope to see you guys on Battle.net. And perhaps one day I'll play a game with you.